sharing good news of great joy to all people. Elation Church. Welcome to Elation Church. We're excited that you're joining in with us this week for worship. And if you're joining us from South Claremont, Davenport, Champions Gate, or anywhere else in the Four Corners area, I want to invite you to join us for our first live service on Easter Sunday morning at Citrus Ridge Academy at 10 o'clock. If you're not familiar where Citrus Ridge Academy is, it's just off of Highway 27 at Sand Mine Road. And we hope that you come join us to celebrate the resurrection. Now, each week when we begin our service, we begin by singing a song. And I want you to join in with us as we sing about the goodness of our God. Amen. God loves you so much. He calls you his treasured possession. Let's pray together. God, I thank you for your goodness. I thank you for your love. I thank you for the opportunity that we have today to come around your word. I pray that you would speak to our hearts, give us ears to hear everything you would say to us by your spirit today. In Jesus name I pray. Amen. Amen. Well, today on the Christian calendar, we are celebrating Palm Sunday. And I don't know if you realize it or not, but the events surrounding the first Palm Sunday are recorded in all four Gospels in the New Testament. Now, today we're going to be looking at all of them and considering a word out of each one of them. But I want to start out by reading from Luke's account. It's found in Luke chapter 19 verses 28 through 44. Let's listen to God's word. Jesus went on toward Jerusalem, walking ahead of his disciples. As they came to the towns of Bethpage and Bethany on the Mount of Olives, 
he sent two disciples ahead. Go into that village over there, he told them. As you enter it, you will see a young donkey tied there that no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks, why are you untying that colt? Just say, the Lord needs it. So they went and found the colt, just as Jesus had said. And sure enough, as they were untying it, the owners asked them, why are you untying the colt? And the disciples simply replied, the Lord needs it. So they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their garments over it for him to ride on. As he rode along, the crowd spread out their garments on the road ahead of him. When they reached the place where the road started down the Mount of Olives, all of his followers began to shout and sing as they walked along, praising God for all the wonderful miracles they had seen. Blessings on the King who comes in the name of the Lord, peace in heaven and glory in highest heaven. But some of the Pharisees among the crowd said, Teacher, rebuke your followers for saying things like that. He replied, If they keep quiet, the stones along the road would burst into cheers. But as they came closer to Jerusalem and Jesus saw the city ahead, he began to weep. How I wish today that you of all people would understand the way to peace. But now it's too late and peace is hidden from your eyes. Before long, your enemies will build ramparts against your walls and encircle you and close you in from every side. They will crush you into the ground and your children with you. Your enemies will not leave a single stone in place because you did not accept your opportunity for salvation. Now, as I said, that's Luke's account of the very first Palm Sunday, and that's the day that we're celebrating today. Now, in Luke's account, he, he goes through the story that we just read, but he leaves out probably the most well-known word in Scripture surrounding Palm Sunday. Can you guess what that is? Well, I don't know what you guess, but the word that I'm talking about is Hosanna. Would you go ahead and say that out loud? Hosanna. And we use that as a word of praise to God, but it's only found in scriptures surrounding this story in Matthew, Mark, and John's account. Now, that word Hosanna, let's talk about that word just a little bit. It's an English word, but it comes from a Greek word. That Greek word is spelled H-O-O-S-A-N-N-A, and I'm not a great pronouncer of Greek or Hebrew words, but that word, I would pronounce it husana, all right? Husana. And that's the Greek word. The, the word wasn't even in English. It comes from the Greek word from this story that we're talking about today. So let's take a look in the other Gospels and how that word is used. Now that word hosanna, it only appears five times in the New Testament. And like I said, it is all only used and always used surrounding the event that we celebrate today, Palm Sunday. So let's look at Matthew 21, starting with verse 9. It says this, Then the multitudes who went before and those who followed cried out, saying, Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. So we find it two times in Matthew 21, 9. In Mark 11, verses 9 and 10, it says this, Then those who went before and those who followed cried out, saying, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the kingdom of our father David that comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. So that word Hosanna is found twice in Mark. Now let's go to John and look at chapter 12, verses 12 and 13 it says this the next day a great multitude that had come to the feast when they heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him and cried out Hosanna blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord the King of Israel so that word Hosanna that's all five times that it's found 
in the New Testament, but guess what? It wasn't a natural word in the Greek language either because the root of this word Hosanna, it's in English and then we looked at Greek, it's actually just a, a word that's put into Greek and put into English that actually comes from the Hebrew language in the Old Testament. And it's really a Hebrew phrase. So Hosanna is a Greek word that comes from the Hebrew phrase, Haushiana, Haushiana, all right? And like I said, I'm not the greatest person to pronounce that. It's spelled H-O-W-S-H-I-Y-A-A-H-N-A-A. So you take your spelling on it or take your phonetics or the way you would say it but I would say it's Haushiana, all right? So that Greek word comes from this Hebrew phrase. It's not just one word, it's a phrase. And that word only appears one time in the entire Old Testament. And it's found in a, that phrase, I mean, it only appears one time in the Old Testament and it's found right in the middle of one of the Psalms. Now, some of the psalms are psalms of worship and psalms of praise. This particular psalm is a prophetic psalm, all right? It's prophesying about the Messiah, about the promised one from God to save his people and to rule over his people. So it's a prophetic psalm. It's Psalm 118. And we're going to look at that and we're going to dissect these verses, but it's Psalm 118 verses 19 through 29. Let's listen to what it says. And let's remember now that this is a prophetic psalm talking about the Messiah. It says this, Open to me the gates of righteousness. Gates of righteousness? That means that there's a gate that we can go to to find righteousness or right standing with God or to be right with God. Open to me the gates of righteousness. I will go through them and I will praise the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord through which the righteous shall enter. So this prophetic Psalm says that there's a gate and it's asking God to open up the gates. And this is the gate it said through which the righteous shall enter. It's, it's the way to be made right with God. And Jesus fulfilled this messianic psalm, right? This prophetic psalm. Because Jesus said in John 10, 9, listen to the words of Jesus. He says, yes, I am the gate. And those who come in through me will be saved. So it's a prophetic psalm. Jesus is the gate. He is the gate to righteousness. See, so many people believe that they have to do right to be right with God. But let me tell you something. None of us can do right enough. None of us can be right through our actions to be right with God because we all mess up. The Bible says that all of us have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. We can't be good enough to be accepted by God. We can't be good enough to be right with God. And Jesus is the gate to be right with God. See, we can only be right with God by believing in Jesus and going through him as the gate to be right with God. Jesus says, I am the gate and those who come in through me will be saved. Let's go back to Psalm 118. Back at verse 21, it says, I will praise you for you have answered me and have become my salvation. The stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone and that's talking about Jesus. Because the religious leaders, the Pharisees, Sadducees, all of those religious people, all of the Jews rejected Jesus and he is the chief cornerstone and he has become our salvation 
I'll read it again, verse 21. I will praise you for you have answered me and have become my salvation. Verse 22, the stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. Verse 23, this was the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes, and it is. And then verse 24, probably you've heard this verse before. It says this, this is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. And then we come to this word or this phrase, hushiana in Hebrew, which became husana in Greek and hosanna in English. It's in verse 25 of Psalm 118. And it says this in my English translation that I'm using is saying, save now save now. And this is the phrase where we get the word Hosanna. Let's continue reading in verse 25. Save now, I pray, O Lord. O Lord, I pray, send now prosperity. Send now success. Send now flourishing. Send now blessing, right? Send now prosperity. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And this Verse 25 from Psalm 18 is what the people were saying as Jesus was riding this young colt into Jerusalem. They were saying, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Now, that word Hosanna is like crying out, save me, please. It's like a cry for help. Save now, as it was translated in the English Bible that I just read from. Now, if we look at that Greek phrase, it means to be open, to be wide or free, to free us, to rescue us, to save us, or to make us safe. That's the full definition of that phrase. So I want you to consider something. Have you, have you ever been swimming in the ocean or in the pool? and you got to the point where you needed rescuing. I remember growing up when I would, when I would play with my friends and they would, they would like push me underwater. I wasn't the greatest swimmer and it's like I couldn't, and it was like I was almost about to drown and you get really scared. I mean, I don't know if you've ever been in a situation like that before. I don't know if you've ever been in a situation in the ocean where where the undercurrent or the, or the riptide begin to carry you out and you thought that you weren't going to make it because you couldn't swim out of it. Have, have you ever been in a point like that in water where all of a sudden you needed help? As we think about this word Hosanna, that's where I want to encourage you to go in your mind. It's like you're about to drown and you're crying out for help. So it's like, it's, you go under, you come back up, help, help, help me, save me, rescue me. And that's the way this Hebrew phrase started out. But Hosanna is not just a cry for help. See, it is a cry for help, but then it, that same phrase and that same word could be applied to the lifeguard is here. Rescue is here. Salvation is here. Hope is here. So that cry for help, Hosanna, turns into help is here. Rescue is here. Salvation is here. Hope is here. And that's what the people were shouting as Jesus had fed thousands of people, as they had seen him heal hundreds of people, and there were times when everybody who was there, it's like he healed them all, and, and everybody had seen the miracles, everybody had seen, everybody had ate, you know, this bread from these few loaves and fish, and you know what? The people, by using that word Hosanna, that day as Jesus was descending down into Jerusalem from the Mount of Olives, that day when people were shouting, Hosanna, they were saying, the Messiah 
is here. The one that was written about in Psalm 118, he's here. Now let's go back to Psalm 118 and pick back up in, at verse 26, at the last half of that. We have blessed you from the house of the Lord. God is the Lord and he has given us light. Bind the sacrifice with cords to the horns of the altar. This is talking about Jesus still. It's talking about Jesus being light. It's talking about Jesus being a sacrifice in this prophetic psalm. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He said, if you follow me, you won't have to walk in darkness, but you will have the light that leads to life. Let's go back to Psalm 118, verse 28. You are my God, and I will praise you. You are my God, and I will exalt you. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. His mercy endures forever is the way the text that we are reading today, it's the way it is. So, back to that word Hosanna. Hosanna, as they shouted it out that day, it was saying this, the Messiah is here, rescue is here, hope is here, deliverance is here, the Messiah is here. Now that should have been a great time as Jesus was riding down into Jerusalem and they were shouting, the Messiah is here, but our text goes on to say that as they're shouting Hosanna and as Jesus begins to see the city of Jerusalem in front of him, he looks over the city and begins to cry. And now when you look up the original language, this is not just a little tear ran down his face. No, this is saying that Jesus began to sob. Have you ever had the snubs before where you can't hardly breathe and, and you're crying? Yeah. It says to sob or to wail out loud. All these people are praising Jesus, saying that he is a Messiah. They're shouting Hosanna. And Jesus begins to sob and to wail out loud as he looks at the city. And why is he so brokenhearted? Well, Matthew 15, 8, 9 says this. These people honor me with their lips. Yeah, they're, they're shouting, Hosanna, Hosanna. But their hearts are far from me. Their worship is a farce. You see, just because these people were shouting Hosanna, it didn't mean that they were really worshiping God. Now, they had a misunderstanding of who the Messiah was going to be. They thought the Messiah was coming to overthrow the Romans and to set up a a earthly government in Jerusalem and for the Jews to be self-ruled again. They saw Jesus as possibly that person. They had no idea that he was going to be a sacrifice to take their sins and my sin and your sin upon himself and to be the sacrifice for our sins and then become the gate that would make us right with God by believing in Him. And Jesus began to sob, I believe, because this, that these verses in Matthew that He had said, it, they came true that day as they come true often. People honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me, and their worship is a farce. See, Jesus was crying because the people saw him as an event or as a miracle or as some kind of provider. And we got to remember that Jesus is not an event. He's, he's not someone that we go visit on Sunday morning. He, he's a person. Jesus is not a worship service or a worship experience. He is a person. And Jesus is not supposed to be just an add-on to our life like we have our life completely figured out and planned out. Then we give Jesus just a little bit of time because we add a little bit of Jesus like we're rubbing on some sunscreen. Jesus is not an add-on to your life or to my life. He's not an event. He's a person. 
and He is life. If we want to experience spiritual life and all that comes with it, the blessings and the abundant life, then we've got to see Jesus as a person and we've got to see Jesus as our life. And in Luke 19, 42 and 44, back to those verses, it says this, How I wish today that you of all people would understand the way to peace, but now it's too late. You did not accept your opportunity for salvation. Jesus was looking over Jerusalem. He was He was thinking about how the Jews and Israel was God's chosen people. He was He was thinking about uh, the law of Moses and the relationship with Abraham, and he was He was thinking about everything that he, as God, had done to reach out to these people. And then now that God had added flesh to his deity and was walking among them, they missed it. God was right there. They could see him. They could talk to him. They could touch him. But the most religious people the people who were supposed to know God and have a relationship with God, they missed it when God was right there among them. And Jesus knew that this Palm Sunday, all this shouting of Hosanna would eventually turn into crucify Him over the coming week. And that's what happened because we know the rest of the story. But Jesus was heartbroken. Even as they were crying out, the Messiah is here. Jesus was heartbroken. And he said, I wish that that today that that you of all people would understand the way to peace, that would would accept the opportunity for salvation, but, but you missed it. You missed it. He said, look, I'm the Messiah. I am the gate to righteousness. I am the light that reveals the path to a life of peace and joy and blessing and abundance. That's who I am. And I want to know you. Now, as we close our service today, I want to, I want to ask you something. Do you have a relationship with religion? Or do you have a relationship with Jesus? Because there are two different things. You know, to have a relationship with a system of belief or to have some kind of mental agreement with a system of belief and and even to attend a service on a semi-regular basis or, or to even watch a service online. I mean, do you have a relationship with religion? Or do you have a relationship with Jesus? See, a relationship with religion will not take you to heaven one day. See, there's going to be many people, Jesus said, there's going to be many people who are going to say, Lord, didn't we do this religious thing in your name? Didn't we do this religious thing? Didn't we do this religious thing? And Jesus is going to look at them and say, I I never knew you because Salvation is about having a relationship with Jesus. The Bible says to know Him is eternal life. To know Him, to be in relationship with Him. So see, I'm not asking you if you're a member of a church. I'm not asking you if you go to worship services on a regular basis. I'm I'm not asking you if you've been dipped, dunked, or sprinkled. Listen, all those things are good things. Don't take me wrong. Everything I just said are good things. But none of those things are the same thing as a relationship with Christ. None of those things are the same thing as receiving God's gift of eternal life. Let me tell you what it is. Let me tell you what will get you to heaven. Well, first of all, you have to believe that Jesus is who the Bible says He is, that He is the Son of God. you got to believe that He loves you you got to believe that He died on the cross for you and for your sin. Can you believe that? 
Can you believe that Jesus is God? Jesus is the eternally begotten Son of God in relationship with God? Can, can you believe that Jesus is God? Can you believe that He loved you so much He died for you? Can you today admit that you're not right with God? Remember, it's not about being good enough because none of us can be good enough to be right with God. The Bible says in Romans 3.23 that all of us have sinned. We've all missed it. Can, can you come to the place where you realize that you're a sinner and that your sin separates you from God? Can you confess that sin to God? Can you put yourself in agreement with Him? Can you admit to God? Can you take ownership for your own life and admit to God that you are a sinner? Can you ask Jesus to forgive you? Because He died for you. And you might think, well, I've got to do all this good stuff to get Jesus to forgive me. No, you just have to believe. You have to confess your sin to Him. The Bible says, if you admit to Him that you're a sinner, if you confess your sin, He's faithful and He's just, and He will forgive you and wash you clean. Can you ask Jesus and ask His Holy Spirit to help you to live for Him? Can you ask Jesus right now to be your Lord? Now that word Lord means that you've surrendered the ownership rights of your life to Him. The Bible says if you call on the name of the Lord, you'll be saved. Can you ask Jesus to be your Lord? Can you say something like, hey Jesus, up until today, my life's just been all about me, but from today on, I want my life to be about you. I want to live for you. I want to follow you. Can you do those things? If you've never done that, guess what? Got some great news. You can do it right now. And I would love to lead you in a prayer. Would you pray with me? Let's pray. Because the day I believed in Jesus, the day He forgave me, I mean, it's been a long time now because it was in 1974, but ever since that day, I've never been the same. Let's pray together. Jesus, I believe you are the Son of God. Go ahead, tell Him that. I believe you died on the cross for me in my place for my sin. I believe you rose again from the grave just like the Bible says. And today, I realize that I'm a sinner. I've messed up. I broke your rules. But also realize that you love me and that you came and laid down your life on a cross, shed your blood for me. So I ask you to forgive me. Jesus, help me to turn away from all the things in my life that don't honor you and don't please you. Help me to turn away from those things. And Jesus, today, I ask you to be my Lord. Up until today, my life's just been all about me. But from today on, I want my life to be about you. Help me to live for you. Help me to follow you. Jesus, thank you for forgiving me. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for adopting me into your family. Thank you for sending your Holy Spirit to be in me and with me. And Jesus, thank you that one day I'll be able to spend eternity with you in heaven. And thank you that from today on I'll be able to walk with you and know you and walk in your Spirit. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thanks again for joining with us here today at Elation Church, and thanks for being a part of our Elation family. Hey, if you prayed with me today, would you do something? Would you go to our website at www.elation.church and let us know? There, You can scroll down on the page and there's a contact information to let us know about the decision that you made today. If you give us your mailing address, we would love to send you a little blue book about it's called how to find god and it's also a copy of the new testament we would love to send that to you and it'll be absolutely free to you it'd be our gift to you in celebration of what god did in your life today also if today's message was an encouragement to any of you that are watching 
Would you consider joining with us on our mission? Would you consider hitting the share button right under this video to share today's message with all of your social media friends? And then one more time, I want to invite you, everybody in the Four Corners area, make plans to join us on Easter Sunday morning at 10 o'clock at Citrus Ridge Academy. And I really hope to meet you face to face there out of the thousands of people across Four Corners that have been watching the video every week. I'd love to meet you face to face Easter Sunday morning at 10 o'clock. It's going to be a great time and I hope you join us. Hey, thanks again for being with us today. And here at Elation, we're bringing good news of great joy to all people. And we'll see you right back here next week. This online worship experience was brought to you by the friends and partners of Elation Church.